Hi, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. In this video, we're going to create this awesome looking photo gallery in After Effects. Some of you more advanced users should be able to come up with something a little bit more fancy. But for this video, we'll stick to creating a fairly simple gallery that almost everyone should be able to create and use. I might make another video later on featuring some more advanced techniques. We're going to be using a plugin that's going to make things very easy. I've created a project in After Effects and imported a few images and I did that by using file import file. Now the image I'm going to open here is the landscape and this is just basically a very blurred landscape image which I'm going to use as the background. You can use whatever kind of background you want. I recommend choosing something that's not going to detract from your front image. We're going to go to composition, new composition, and we're going to create a new composition which we'll call showcase. I'm using the HDTV 1080-24 preset, and we are going to create a composition which is 20 seconds long. I want to also go to the advanced tab and make sure that we're using classic 3D. Grab your background and drop it into the showcase composition. Now my background is the same size as the composition so I don't need to resize it. I'm going to click on five images and I'll also drag those into the composition. These are a different size so we'll need to go to the images, right click and choose transform fit to comp height. That does most of the work for us however I'm just going to go in and holding down shift I'm just going to drag in the corners so that we scale them down a little bit further. Now we've got a little bit of room to work with we can go to the layer choose new null object and we're just creating a null object we're going to use to control our camera. The next thing to do is to apply an effect you will need to download this plugin and I'll give you a link in the description. Choose effect then go down to video copilot and choose sure target. There are three excellent video tutorials on the video copilot site on how to use the sure target plugin but I'm also going to cover the basics here. Once you've applied the effect you'll find that the null object is transformed into a 3D layer and the null is now coupled to a sure target camera. You'll find in the null also an effect has been applied and you can see the uh, parameters up here. Let's go back to the timeline and I'm going to turn all the pictures into 3D layers as well, all except the landscape, otherwise bad things will happen. We might as well turn on the motion blur for the layers as well, however don't turn on the motion blur for the composition otherwise that will slow down render times. You can turn it on before your final render but keep the landscape as a 2D layer at all times. Let's open up the null object and go to the effects. We'll find that the sure target effect has got a parameter and it's set to 1. What I want to do is to keyframe that, so click on the stopwatch and then move to 2 seconds. Then we're going to change that to 2. And then we're going to keep on incrementing the number every 2 seconds. So we now change it to 3. And we're going to keep doing that until we've got the same number, the total number for our pictures, which is 5. This is going to be the basis of our animation. We now need to link the animation keyframes here with the pictures that they relate to and we do this in the effects control. So we're going to go to the target layers and we're going to go to target one and I'm going to choose the first image which is pg1.jpg. I've given these uh, pictures numbers that are identical to the target numbers just to make it easy for myself. PG stands for photo gallery. We're now going to go back to the timeline and what I want to do here is to check out the animation if any and uh, you'll see that there is absolutely no animation so what we actually need to do now is to control the camera and we're going to do that by moving the pictures let's go to the custom view one you can see that there is a camera here and I'm going to change the color of the camera to blue just to make it a little bit easier to see and then we're going to click on the first image and move it and notice how the camera moves with the picture. So we're using the picture to control the null object and the null object is controlling the camera. So in, in effect the pictures are controlling the camera. 
we move the pictures around I'm gonna move them back into Z space like this in the sequence that they're going to appear so we're gonna to go to image 4 and we'll take that way back and finally for image 5 we're gonna do something a little bit special Let's move it back into Z space and then move it up along the Y axis that will produce a pretty cool looking animation we can now preview the animation and we'll see how the camera now reacts to each of the layers now that's not a very good anim that's not a very good view so I'm going to change the render to wireframe the wireframe render mode is very good for previewing it's also excellent for troubleshooting it shows you everything that's going on in the scene even things that are not visible inside of the display area as well as using this custom view you should also try out the top view that's also good for troubleshooting however we'll go back to the sure target camera view I'm going to change back to final quality but I'm also going to reduce the resolution to quarter just to reduce render time and we'll be able to see what kind of animation we've created I want to just bring in the work area just to limit the span of the animation I'm going to limit the work area just to the area where we've got keyframes right we'll give this a try and you can see it's a pretty decent looking animation and wait for it we're now going to go up I think it's always a good idea to finish on and up <laughs> okay so the animation looks okay I like having objects in the background that gives us an idea of the 3d workspace and then we have that really positive finish on and up you can slow down the animation by selecting the uh, keyframes hold down alt or option and then drag the keyframes and quite often slower animations are a lot more elegant that looks awesome however even at this slower speed we're not really getting time to appreciate the pictures and this is a photo gallery after all I'm going to go back to the timeline and select all the keyframes I'm going to go to the first keyframe and then move forward a little bit copy the keyframes Control or command C and then paste them Control or command V that will create two keyframes that are identical in between those two keyframes the camera pauses we get a chance to appreciate the pictures and we can also move the keyframes forward to increase the length of the pause now this is pretty awesome but when we're paused the animation is dead still we can improve on that just a little bit let's go to the effects control and we're going to choose wiggle wiggle is going to give us a really cool animation in the pauses 0.2 for the wiggle speed 120 for the wiggle amount now when we're paused we get this hover this kind of hummingbird hover it adds a little bit of character a little bit of animation during the pauses increase the wiggle amounts in order to get a kind of drunken hummingbird effect we're going to go back to the beginning and then preview this and I think that's looking pretty cool but this is meant to be not just a photo gallery it's meant to be an animated photo gallery template so what we want to do is to change one of the images let's do a very sensible thing and change the last image for a logo so I'm gonna to go to PG5 the last image I'm gonna to go to the project panel and I'm going to click on my logo then holding down alt or option I'm going to drag it to PG5 that replaces PG5 and we'll have our logo as the final image you can do this with any image let's go down to the logo and fade it out hit T on the logo that brings up opacity click on the stopwatch for opacity is at hundred percent so move forward a few seconds and then keyframe it at zero percent and we should get this gradual fade out so we could use this as a kind of intro we've got our pictures as a picture gallery and after we've displayed a few of our pictures we go to the logo and then the logo will fade out you could use that as a start for a YouTube video or some other project and like I said you can change all the images so you can use this as a template 
add a little bit of music and it should be pretty awesome. We want to look at one other feature of this plugin, which is the ability to blur out parts of the video. What I want to do is to have some of these images in the background blurred out. I like the kind of parallax they give, but we want the focus to be on the front image. Go to autofocus and turn on focus targets and depth of field. You can also mess around with the aperture and blur, blur levels. As you can see, these do cause some of the objects either in the foreground or, or the background to blur out and that allows us to focus just on one thing at a time and the plugin does all the focusing for us. You can also turn off autofocus and do manual focusing so it's very versatile. By now you should see what an awesome plugin this is for this kind of animation. There's one other feature which can produce really amazing animation. Go and turn on the auto rotate and then bring up the rotation tool. Make sure you set it to rotation and not orientation. I'm going to work on this image here. It's the third image and I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis. Now when we look at the animation you'll see that we do have this extra rotation as we come to this image and then we rotate out again. Now you can rotate in any direction, X, Y, even Z, and it can produce some pretty interesting outcomes. Finally, consider making several short gallery videos, then combining those to create a longer animation for a little bit of variety. But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that useful. Take care. Bye.